thanks for joining us today. Um, this is the latest in a series of monthly webinars that we've been doing sponsored by Bands in Town for Artists and the Bands in Town Artists community. Uh, our guest today is Sammy Kaufman, who's the music lead at Linktree, and we'll uh, get to her in just a second. Um, if you're a member of the Bands in Town Artist Community, one lucky winner is going to be chosen to win a uh, one year of Linktree Pro for free. Um, so joining the community uh, gets you access to special things like this, giveaways, et cetera, and joining the Bands in Town Artist Community is totally free. So uh, Jojo just put a link in the chat and uh, you should check it out if you haven't already. Um, after Sammy's presentation, we'll be doing a Q&A, so type your questions in the Q&A or the chat in Zoom, uh, and uh, you know during the presentation while you're listening, and I'll pull some out. If you don't uh, get to uh, have your question answered, Sammy's graciously going to answer some questions in the artist community afterwards. Um, I should also add that this session is being recorded, uh, and the recording will be sent to all the registrants, so whether you're watching now or you just signed up and can't watch today, then that's, uh, you're gonna find out the great information that Sammy has to share either way. So to get started, I just wanna introduce Sammy um, and, and just a, a quick one, Sammy, tell us about your, your journey. I know you worked at the biggest agency in the world, CAA, or one of the biggest, and for one of the bigger or biggest managers in the world, Scooter Brown and his investment or music tech investment firm. So just. Tell, tell us about you and what, what brought you here. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Bruce. Um, and thanks, everyone, for having me. So, yeah, I started out at Creative Artist Agency, CAA, um, working in the music touring department for the first three and a half years of my career. So, you know, routing the tours, negotiating those deals, I was super lucky, got to work with a wide range of clients, everyone from you know, uh, Crosby, Stills and Nash, to Glass Animals, to Maggie Rogers, to Cardi B, um, and loved the live space, loved being in music, but um, wanted to kind of continue that journey in a more, I guess, innovative way, if you will. I think agencies are fantastic, but it's a lot of the same thing over and over. And so I actually found myself working at Scooter Braun's music tech investment fund called Raised in Space, where I handled all of our industry relations. And this was pre-COVID, so it was such a fascinating time um, of, you know, seeing like these entrepreneurs and, and tech professionals trying to break the industry and make it, making it easier and better for artists. And I like really fell in love with that intersection of music and tech. Um, and as much as venture capital is fun, I was like, let me get back to working with artists directly. And so that's how I found myself at Linktree, um, which, you know, we'll obviously get to, but I handle all of our music relationships from artists, their teams, labels, management companies, and just making sure that people are using our platform in the best way possible so they can connect all of their content um, with all of their fans. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. I'm going to get out of the way and you do your thing. And again, everybody type your questions in the chat and I'll be back at the end to help uh, feel those questions. So thanks so much. All yours. Thanks, Bruce. All right, everyone. Hi, it's so great to meet you all. Um, I'm going to just really run through the platform uh, so you can understand what it is, how best to use it for your goals, some best practices, what not to do, um, and also give you kind of a sneak peek into a feature that we're releasing in the next coming months um, that will be really, really helpful in kind of understanding who your fans are. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. OK, um, so for people who don't know what Linktree is, uh, we actually started in 2016. We were created essentially because I'm not sure if you've noticed, but you can only link out to one thing in your Instagram bio, which regardless if you're a musician, any type of creator, even honestly a normal person, you probably have more than one thing to link to. And so we created that initially to help solve that problem, but we have really expanded. Um, as you all know, it's tough to be a musician these days. You're expected to be on every platform that exists. So Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitch. Um, and it's really hard to connect those audiences and also to make sure that your content is reaching the right people. So Linktree has really evolved to allow 
all of your content to live in one place. And so instead of having to update eight social bios, every time you have new music, every time you go on tour, every time you release a video, you only have to update your link tree. Um, and the best thing about link tree is that you can really customize it to, to match you and match either your album, um, your brand, whoever you are. So there's just a lot of different things you can be doing here. I'm going to show you a ton of different examples um, and dive into these features, but as you can see, it, you can really customize it in a way that makes sense. So the first feature I do want to show you um, is a music product that we released last year. So in the most simple way, you're going to see artists linking out to their tour, their music, their videos, really anything that um, they're working on, which is the whole point. You're trying to make it as easy as possible for people to find what they're looking for. So you get more views, you get more streams, you get more clicks, all that fun stuff. But basically what we were finding is, you know, we were working with artists and they were linking out to another platform. So I'll give you a quick example, actually. So if we go to Selena Gomez's link tree, she has a lot going on. It is Selena Gomez. Um, but if you click her first link to one of her most recent releases, it brings you to a whole other page. And so, and there's an ad, which is not great. Um, but something to really keep in mind with your digital strategy is that um, the more you bring a fan to a different place, uh, the more drop off that'll be, which means if that fan is less likely to go and click into something else and that journey is done. So they're going to go click this and then they're not going to go back and look at your tour. They're not going to go back and watch a video. It really just ends that process. So you're seeing this as like a release page. It basically is this release across all of these streaming services. So Selena is meeting her fans based on what their preferred streaming services. Not everyone uses Spotify. Not everyone uses uh, Apple Music. And so this is something that we built that we're pretty excited about. So the way that it works is we now have this like release page, this music link directly within your link tree. So you can see here, it says uh, Stream No Romeo, which is this artist single. It opens up, it has not only an audio preview, so this will play 30 seconds of each of these songs. If it does hit 30 seconds, it will count as um, a stream, which is great and also gives you an option to kind of preview that music. And so, um, you know what, this is, I'm gonna, not gonna lie, this is not a great example because she's only linking out to Spotify. So let me show you one on Mike Shinoda's page. Uh, he has one here, stream his newest song. You have the album art, and then you have that release across all of these streaming services. And so let's say I use YouTube, I can find it there. I, you can use Pandora. And again, it just makes it so it's easier for your fan to actually listen to what you put out. But the best part about this is that there's like some magic on the back end. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So this works with any song or album URL from any of the major streaming services. And so what you're looking at now is our um, backend, like this is what your link tree profile will look like. Super, super intuitive. You're just going to click add a new link. I'm going to paste uh, a Spotify URL that I copied um, from another window. And so, oh, whoops. There you go. So what it did is it automatically recognized that it is a music link and it found that release across all of these streaming services. So you don't have to do any of that work. It's going to find it for you. Um, you can edit them if you'd like. Like, let's say that's not the right title link, or let's say you wanted to put something else. You can use a different URL. You could also toggle these on and off. Let's say title is not a big priority for you. Let's say you just wanted to do Apple Music and Spotify. Um, you can remove these pretty easily by just clicking that. And you also can rearrange the order of these. So ultimately, this is just a really, really great way of um, making it easy for your fans to listen to your music. The other benefit, which I think you saw a little bit earlier, is that we do have these audio previews. So it works with Spotify. It also works with SoundCloud. Um, and it works with Audio Mac. But not only can you embed uh, songs, you can embed albums, but you can also embed playlists. 
So I think, you know, playlists are for better or for worse, I love it, are kind of coming back. I think a lot of people are curating their own music again. Um, so let's say you wanted to do, you know, your top songs and put it on your page. What, what if you wanted to, you know, share with your fans what you're listening to? You can do that here. So this will, I'm not going to play it because I'm not going to blast 30 seconds of my music to you. Um, but you can see this is a really cool opportunity to just allow people to listen to your music. And again, works with Spotify, SoundCloud, Audio Mac. Another uh, feature that we added recently through uh, the help with, of our good friends and fans in town is you can now actually fully sync your tour dates to your link tree. Um, I'm not Dua Lipa, unfortunately, but I am using her as an example. So you can see here, it's actually going to pull the upcoming six shows. And so if you actually click on these individual shows, it's going to bring you to that Bands in Town page of that specific show. So again, just like a really good way to uh, allow your fans to, to discover that you're touring. I think the more you can tell them that you're touring, the better off you are. And the benefit here is, you know, you're driving people to your link tree to say, hey, uh, check out my new song, Don't Start Now great, I'm looking at this new song, I'm scrolling through, I'm checking out other things. Maybe I didn't know that there, were, there was a tour going on. So a best practice in general is really to embed as much content as you can because you're going to create this opportunity for your fans to discover other pieces of content. Um, we have seen that if you do embed a video or embed a piece of content, it doubles the chance of your fan to click on something else. And so there's two ways to do this. Um, the first way is just copying and pasting your um, artist page, your Bands in Town artist page. So if I just copy and paste this, I'm adding it to my link tree, pasting that. And again, recognizes that it's a Bands in Town um, link and you can either display the Bands in Town profile, which is what you saw on my page, or you can always um, link off directly if that's something that you prefer. And so I'm sure you're noticing this pattern. You can uh, basically copy and paste these links and it'll automatically do everything for you, which is great. The other way to add this to your link tree is let's say you're already on Bands in Town. Let's say you're updating your links. There is actually um, a tab in your settings page on your artist page. Um, if you go to that, if you go to that section, there's going to be a sync on link tree button. It'll ask you, I think, to log in once and then it's automatically going to sync. So anytime you update your page, this will update automatically. You're never going to have to go back into link tree or go back into your bands in town profile to make sure that these two are connected and updated. So that's pretty exciting. Um, another big feature, honestly, that is probably our most popular feature is our video embeds. So let me give you a good example. We're back on Mike Shinoda's link tree. He, you know, is really using this as a, as a highlight of like everything that has to do with the song. So he has the music link. Um, and then if you scroll up, he actually has a lyric video. So what's great about this is that work, this works for YouTube, Vimeo, Vivo, Facebook, um, also works with YouTube Live. And we even have a Twitch live stream. If you're ever um, kind of experimenting with that, maybe you're doing a listening party on Twitch, maybe you're doing an album release. Um, I don't know, maybe you do gaming on the side and you're like, hey, let's just put it all in one spot. You're actually able to do that. And the big benefit here, similar to the audio, is that um, if someone clicks this and it hits 30 seconds, it will count as a view. So this is going to work pretty much exactly the same as you've been seeing. You just click add a new link, you click paste. It recognizes that it is a YouTube link or a video link, and it gives you all of your options here. Autoplay and mute is already um, checked because that's kind of a best practice. If it's already playing, if it's muted, it's more likely that your fan is going to keep it open um, and discover it. Um, something I did want to say too, you know, we do have um, a free version of Linktree and a paid version of Linktree. There's actually two tiers to the paid. Um, I'll make sure to tell you what falls under the paid tier and what is free, just so you're able to differentiate. Um, 
we have a $5 a month and we have a $9 a month, but so far everything I've shown you is under our free tier. So all good. And I think as we mentioned, um, you know, there, you will have access to a coupon code that's going to give you the opportunity to try out all these pro features. So just wanted to say that ahead of time. Um, but yes, videos, most popular feature, really engaging, um, just great to kind of have that. The other benefit here too, um, this is going to be a paid feature, but you are able to actually display the latest YouTube video on your link tree um, by just collecting this, or sorry, clicking this button. So let's say you are the type of artist that's putting out a lot of video content. Maybe you blog on the side, maybe you're big on TikTok um, or like TikTok's a big priority for you. You can actually have that automatically display. So just making your life easier type of situation. Another quick twitch, another quick trick here is you also can make it a lot easier for your fans to subscribe to your YouTube. So if we go to Harry Hudson's link tree, he has a subscribe on YouTube button. So he just created a, a link to his channel. And when you click it, it already has that subscribe to YouTube pop up engage. So just less clicks for your fan um, to basically accomplish what you want them to. And this is really simple as well. There's a lot of fancy ways to do this in the digital marketing world, but in Linktree world, you literally just click two buttons. So you copy and paste that YouTube channel. And then you say, ask visitors to subscribe. Um, another good best practice here. So we recommend, where was Harry? There he was. Um, we recommend using social icons to connect all of your platforms in one place. These can live either below or above all of your main links. Um, but something we also really recommend is let's say there's a huge channel priority for you as in maybe you're really trying to grow your TikTok audience or maybe like TikTok has done well for you or you're having a larger audience there and it's not transitioning over to Instagram. Um, we recommend having those like follow buttons as main buttons um, because we do see a higher conversion. So it shouldn't be every social platform, um, but like in this case, Spotify and YouTube are big priorities for Harry Hudson. So he has two main buttons for that. Awesome. That is YouTube. Cool. Another thing I wanted to show you all um, is we do allow you to collect payments on Linktree, both through Square and PayPal. Um, let's say you are trying to fundraise for studio time, or let's say you're trying to get tips from a show that you're playing live. Um, you're actually able to do this directly on Linktree. So you can see this artist here, he has um, this little link that says buy me a coffee. And he's actually customized the dollar amount. But if I click $5, I could do whatever I wanted. In theory, you click continue. Um, as the fan, I'd put in my email address, I'd put in a, a message of just saying, hey, you know, love your show, love supporting you, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then when you click continue to pay, it'll bring you to either PayPal or Square option. So you can get really creative with this. Um, I think, especially as you're kind of building your career and building your fan base, this is something that's really, really useful. Another thing that this uh, can be paired with nicely is, um, and that's also a free feature, just so we all know. Um, another way that this can be paired nicely is we do have a QR code that's attached to every link tree. So when you create your link tree account, you're gonna get a QR code. And the way to access that is actually in the share button you click my link tree QR code, and then you can download it as a PNG file or an SVG file. Um, I say this because let's say you are playing a show and you know, you're at, the, people are at the merch booth, you're at the merch booth, you're meeting people. Um, and they're like, Hey, like, you know, I don't have any cash or I don't have much. Like I, I, maybe you don't even have a lot of merch. Maybe that's like a situation you just haven't built out yet. You can have your QR code, put it on a piece of paper, put it on the back of your merch booth, whatever you want. And it can bring people A to your link tree, which is great because you can they'll engage with your content. Um, you can capture their email, you can capture their phone number. I can show you how to do that in a minute. Um, or in this specific case, they can donate to you or they could tip you. And I think just making that as easy as possible um, is really important. And there's a tasteful way to do that. Awesome, cool. 
Um, while I'm on the topic of, I guess, fans, you know, Linktree obviously is made to connect your content to your fans, but I think what's really important is understanding who your fans are. And so we've actually developed a few ways to do this. Um, the way that I'm going to recommend, which is actually coming very soon, is our subscribe feature. So we have essentially allowed fans to subscribe to your Linktree directly in order to receive updates. And we did this because even though people follow you on Instagram or they follow you on YouTube or, you know, um, they follow you on TikTok, they may not always see your content because of the algorithms of those social platforms, which puts you at a disadvantage. And so we want to make sure that your fans who love you, who are following you are seeing the music and the content that you're putting out. So we have a subscribe button. When you click it, fans can either subscribe through email or through a phone number. And so now not only do you get access to those emails and phone numbers, um, if they opt in, you are now able to contact those people directly when you put up new content or if there is new content you want them to be specifically aware of um, by just alerting them. So if I signed up with a text message or sorry, with a phone number, I'll be alerted via text message. If I signed up with an email as a fan, I'll be alerted through an email. Um, and it's just an easy way to make sure that people are seeing what you want. And the way that looks on your side as the artist is we have these little bells and it just says notify subscribers. So let's say I wanted to notify everyone that I just really, I'm Dua Leap and I just released Don't Start Now. Um, I can click notify subscribers. You'd click notify. This is what it's going to look like. So as, as an email, I would get, you know, my face and hey, look, so-and-so just added new content. You wanna check it out. So we're super excited about this. Um, if anyone, as I said, it's not fully released yet, but if anyone is interested in, in, in trying it out, we can definitely add it to your accounts. Um, we're always looking for you know people to test it out, but I just think that's a really great opportunity to learn who, you, who your fans are, who your fans are. Um, and that's also totally free free version, love it. And piggybacking off of that, there's a few features here that, um, you know, as you continue to build your fan base, you can utilize. So the first one is, we call them um, locked content, like locked links. And so the best example I can give you for this is let's say you really want to reward like your top 10% of your fans, like your top 10 fans, let's say. And so you are releasing a music video ahead of time and you put it as a private link or let's say, you, let's do a music instead. Let's say you wanted to do SoundCloud. You can, you use your SoundCloud private um, audio link. You put it on your link tree and you can actually gate that content. So um, it's only unlocked through a code or if people subscribe. So I'm going to give you an example. Um, Let's say I wanted, don't start now again, let's say I wanted to lock this. So I can lock it with the code. So if I click code, I can put in like one, two, three, four, um, or I can even lock it to subscribers. So then when someone tries to click this and open this, they have to subscribe to your link tree in order to receive that content. Um, I will show you what it looks like from a code just because it'll be easier to like understand. So I just put in one, two, three, four. I can put in a short description on what this is. And now on my link tree, I click this. Oh, okay, I'll unlock it. And now I'm listening to this music and I feel special because I have special access to this. So um, that's a fun one that we've been playing around with a lot. This is in our paid tier. So this is under our pro tier, it's the $9 a month. Again, you'd have access to it with the code. Um, something else that is has honestly just become like people's like best friends in life. Um, let me get rid of this so I can show you, uh, is our scheduling link. So you can actually schedule content to go live or expire, which is so helpful if you are releasing something at midnight or maybe you're doing a small tour and the shows go on sale at midnight or you, I don't know, have something else you have to do instead of updating your link tree. Um, you can schedule these to go live or expire. And that's also in our pro tier. And then another feature that has been really useful is our redirect feature. So I think a lot of the time it's 
super key and helpful to have all of your content in one place. Um, but sometimes you just want to push your fans to one thing. Maybe you are playing a show in New York or playing a show in Paris, and that's your most important thing right now. doesn't matter if people are watching your video. You just want them to buy tickets to this show. What you can do is click this redirect button, and it's going to temporarily send all of your visitors to whatever piece of content you want. So if I click redirect to this link, I can set the time for 24 hours. I could set it for a week. I could set it for a year if I wanted to. And so now if I were to click my link tree or someone was to scan my QR code to my link tree or someone was to type in my link tree URL, it's going to hop over my link tree and bring you directly to that piece of content. So I work with a lot of artists and their teams to use this during music releases because they want to just drive traffic to the release for the week. Sweet, that's our redirect. Um, another feature that we added recently um, that we got a lot of feedback on. So basically we really recommend having um, a clean link tree, you know, like a simple link tree, clear call to actions, somewhere between five to seven links, because it just makes it easier to navigate. It's not distracting. Fans are able to find what they're looking for. And so you're going to um, have more clicks. With that said, we got a lot of feedback that people wanted um, videos that were already expanded when someone landed on the page. So instead of, for example, instead of going to Mike Shinoda's page and clicking this to expand the video, that video would already be open and playing. So. The people have spoke, the people spoke and we gave them what they wanted. Um, you can now basically spotlight embedded links. So what that means is, let's see if I can give you a good example. Um, here, we can use this one. So you're gonna click this little star, it says prioritize. And you can, you can animate these if you want to, that's another fun feature. So the link will like pop, it'll swipe, it'll wobble, just to kind of draw the eye to that specific piece of content. Um, but the feature we're talking about is the spotlight link. So it will automatically expand when someone arrives to your link, uh, arrives on your link tree. So if we go back to my link tree, you can see that this music link is already expanded. I normally recommend putting whatever spotlight link you wanna do at the top of your link tree, um, just so it's the first thing that people see. But if you were to do a video, it could autoplay, it would be muted. So it's already uh, ready to go. So those are some of the key features there. Um, another thing I'd like to show you that would be just important, again, as you're kind of building your audience, learning who your fans are, um, are the analytics you're able to see on Linktree. So in our free tier, you're able to see a limited amount of this. You're always gonna be able to see, you know, total views, total clicks, the click-through rate, um, number of subscribers, all that fun stuff. But with our paid version, you're going to be able to really dive in on who these people are. So I'll give you a quick example. I'm actually going to switch accounts because my link tree is not very exciting, meaning I'm the only person who's clicking it, meaning my analytics are boring. So this is our, our music best practices link tree. Um, and we'll dive into some analytics so you can see uh, what you'll be able to see. So we have a whole analytics tab. You know, you're able to see the total views that your link tree received, the clicks, the click through rate, how long it takes someone to click a link on your link tree. Um, that's really good feedback. I mean, let's say this is, you know, 50 seconds. That means that people aren't sure what they want to click on. Maybe they're not clicking anything. Maybe that means your link tree is too busy, or maybe the background's too busy, or maybe there's too many links um, and they're not finding what they're looking for. So that's something to keep in mind. Here, you're able to customize the date range, which is great. So this will go back as far as inception of your, of your link tree, even if you don't have a pro account. Let's say you don't use a pro account for six months. Um, and you're like, you know what? I'm ready to dive into analytics. You're able to upgrade and then look back and see all this. So I'm going to customize for the month of March. You're able to see... Uh, total views, total clicks compared to unique views and unique clicks. For those um, who don't know, unique views are the individual, the number of individual people who are looking at your link tree. So compared to the total views is 
let's say I'm a super fan of yours and I go to your link tree every day. That's great. But me clicking on your link tree a hundred times is a lot different than a hundred individual people clicking your link tree. So it's really good to be able to kind of differentiate that. Um, you also are able to export this information through our pro tier. Um, there's going to be a little button here. That's an arrow and you can export it into like an Excel. It's like a CSV file. This is the fun part. This is where you really get to dive in on where your audience is. I think, you know, we've all been surprised where we're like, oh, wow, why are there, you know, 200 people in the middle of Denmark when I'm a Canadian based artist listening to me? I just think it's really helpful to see those patterns. So not only are you able to see country, you can also see city. So you're actually with our paid, you're able to see literally every physical city that ev any person has ever been in when they've looked at your link tree. So that's fun. Um, refer traffic. So this is a huge part of our best practices. You should really be putting your link tree wherever your fans are. One of the biggest mistakes I see is someone thinking that your link tree should just be in your Instagram bio. It's great as, an, as a place in your Instagram bio, but it should be in all of your social bios. It should also be in YouTube video descriptions. It should be at the bottom of email newsletters. Um, and honestly, the biggest jump in traffic that I see is when people use their link tree actively. So instead of having it just like stagnant in an, an Instagram bio, um, using it as a link sticker and in an Instagram story, you know, when you do an Instagram story and it's like, click here, having it very actionable. Um, I've worked with artists who've done like Reddit AMAs and they've used their link tree then. And it's just, when you attach it to something specific, we do see a higher increase of traffic. Point being is when you put it in a bunch of places, you can also see what audience is the most engaged. Um, so my link tree exists in a lot of places, but you can see if this was like TikTok or Instagram or YouTube, just make better decisions on that. And then device analytics. So this will mostly be mobile for you all just because Linktree is created for that mobile audience, but I'm mostly sending this Linktree out to people via email. So it's a little bit different. And then social icons. So I just have my YouTube on this page, but these are these little icons up top or below. So you can see like, oh, wow, there's actually, you know, 15 people a day clicking into my TikTok from my Instagram or wow, no one's clicking into my TikTok from, from my link tree. Like, what does that mean? How do I fix that? Maybe I make my TikTok a main button um, and solve that. Um, and then you will be able to see if you do have subscribers. So it's not on this page. I'm going to go back over here. So I'll show you. You'll be able to see how many subscribers subscribe to your link tree on a daily basis. So if we go back to analytics, you can see again, very depressing because it's just me, but you would see people subscribing to your link tree here. And then this is how you'd export that data. And then last but not least is the fun part. So this is how you customize your link tree. I think um, we have these beautiful templates that you can use, but I think to me, the, the best link trees I see are the ones that are really unique to that artist. So we have these templates. Um, a lot of these are free, but uh, these, these are on our, our paid tier, but you'll be able to see the difference there. These are all free. Um, you can choose your own color. You can make the background gradient. So it's a bit more dynamic. You can add your own image. You can add your own background. Um, you know, you can really change any color of anything. Um, the buttons, the font. And then if you'd like, you know, if you want to make your link tree a bit more cohesive, you can actually hide the link tree logo. So there's a lot of different things you can do with it. And I also work with artists who actually end up changing their link tree almost on a monthly basis. And I think that's something that they really, really enjoy. Um, but it's ultimately up to you. I also work with artists that keep their link tree exactly the same. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is definitely, I would say the, the big spiel and the feature highlights. Uh, I would just, you know, kind of big takeaways is that your link tree is here to connect all of your content in one place. And it kind of acts as a highlight reel. I think a lot of people ask me, you know, uh, I already have a website. Should I still use a link tree? 
And the answer is yes. I mean, Linktree can act as a website substitute if you'd like, but it's made to be this like top of mind content. What are you promoting this week? And also to be consumed on mobile because most of the people who are coming to your link tree are coming from social platforms. So they're on their phone already. Um, they're not, you know, Googling you. It's more of like, oh shoot, so-and-so put out a new song, links in their bio, let me check it out. And as they go check it out, they discover more content. So um, I would just keep that in mind. And yeah, five to seven links is usually where we recommend, but ultimately it's up to you. Um, but yeah, hopefully that this was, this was helpful. Bruce, I'll invite you back on, but yeah. well, Of course it was helpful. There was a whole <laughs> bunch of information. And if you, you were talking a lot and, and moving fast and that was wonderful, but the comments in the chat are, are very positive. So thank you very much. Oh, good. Um, so I've got a bunch of questions, but before I jump in on, on their questions, I, I do want to emphasize um, you know, we did this partnership with with you guys, Banson Town and, and Linktree. And one of the reasons that we chose to do it with you, because there are there are other link services, let's just admit it, um, is A, you've, you're really deep into music. So you've got all these great tools. And B, you've got this free tier, which means that an artist can get on and get started even at the beginning of their career and start to learn the tool and, and have their fans be familiar with the tool. So I, I, you know, I just wanted to make sure everybody understood that, that there's a way to get started, um, you know, from the very beginning. I, I heard a couple of your best practices, like six to eight links, if I remember correctly. And, you know, do you, any, any other tips on, in that regard, you know, things, do you do it differently when you have a release than when you are announcing a tour or when you're between projects or what, what, what do you see as really working? Yeah, no, that's great questions. Um, I think first and foremost, yeah, five to seven links is ideal. Um, I also think, um, like I said, kind of putting your link tree wherever your fans are. So the more your link tree is out there in like the open, the more traffic you're going to get. And ultimately that's the goal. You want more traffic, you want more clicks. For release specifically, what I keep, what I honestly recommend is the release is your priority. So unless there is a video that's attached to that release, unless there's tour dates that are being announced with that release, focus on the like focus on the release, focus on the music at hand, um, because options are great. But the more options you give someone to click, the more likely they're going to click something that isn't your priority. Um, and it is so easy to kind of switch those links. I, I didn't show you, but you can like toggle them on and off. So it's, you could even have it set up and then during the release, you toggle your other four links off and you're ready to go. Right, awesome. All right, so let's get to some questions. Um, I guess one that we saw a couple of was, can you link to Square or PayPal or Venmo? I think they're, they're thinking about tipping um, with mm -hmm. that. Is that, is that an option? Yes. So the good news about Linktree is even if we don't have the full integration, um, you can link off to any of those links very easily. Uh, what I will say, though, is because we have Square and PayPal internally, it it does it does make sense to connect the provider. So that way people can just do it within Linktree. But with that said, if you prefer to link off, you're more than welcome to. It's super easy. Really, you can link to honestly any link that you'd like. So Square, for example, is an internal link and they're, they're not leaving Linktree to tip you. Is, what, is that what you're saying? Yeah. So the way it works is um, essentially like when you connect, like when you connect your account, it's I'm actually I'm going to reshare my screen sure. just so I can yeah. walk because I, I think this is super important for these types of artists and especially where you are in your career. So the way it works is you click explore and um there's tips and donations. So you click tips and donations. It's going to like set this up as a link. So you can add a payment provider. And so what you'll do if you do, if you are a user of Square or if you're a user of PayPal, you'll log in to your Square account and it'll be connected. And so I'm not going to go through the whole setup, but it is fairly simple. And that way, the tip, the tip option can be attached to something else. So like when you land on someone's link tree and there's your music or there's your tour dates, um, there's also the, like the tip jar below. And so it's just a bit more dynamic. Um, with that said, you know, the other benefit, I know that uh, Venmo and, and Square and uh, PayPal have QR codes, but we also have the QR code. So then you can scan the QR code and it brings you to everything at once. Sure. Super. Um, so 
a lot of people are really uh, excited by this subscribe uh, or subscription awesome. function. So, so can you go over that again quickly when, when that's going to happen and what it does? Yes. So that is going to be released. I'm told, I mean, I do work in tech, so it's constantly changing. Yeah, we, we won't hold you to it. We have I'm this recorded, but I'm, I'm not going to. It's fine. Honestly, like we're incredibly excited about it too, which is why I'm able to share it ahead of time because it really does like give you the option to, to have your fans in the back of your pocket. Um, so it's, I believe it's going to be in like the next two to three weeks. So it's exactly. fairly soon. Um, the other benefit too, is if you do sign up to Linktree using our coupon code, I can reach out to you and make sure that uh, the subscribe feature is added to your account. And at that um, point, they're subscribing to Linktree. Are you grabbing an email address or no? They're just subscribing to Linktree. So they're not subscribing to Linktree. They're subscribing to your Linktree. So like, let's say right. um, you're, you're not getting any emails from Linktree. You're only getting emails of like, hey, Dua Lipa put out new music and you're Dua Lipa and you're saying, hi, I put out new music. And we don't, what I think is also very important to know, we don't collect any of these emails or none of these phone numbers. They're not... They don't belong to us. We don't have them. They're fully yours. And the only time that you're able to get these, the fans opt in. So there is a right. check mark saying like, yes, I would like this person to contact me. Super good. So we, one of the things that was kind of fun to see was we have um, guests, if you will, or viewers from all over the world. And so there's yeah. a couple of them about, obviously from Europe, about uh, GDPR, general data protection. So that if which is basically some European laws that protect people's privacy, et cetera, for those that don't know. So let me just read the question. How does Linktree deal with GDPR? Is there any way to anonymize user data or store the data exclusively on European servers? I guess what you're saying, even as it relates to subscribers, is you're not storing it at all. You're just giving it to the artist, right? Correct. So we are fully GDPR, CCPA compliant because we do right. not store any of this information whatsoever. Um, and because they are physically opting in for the subscribe, um, that is fully my understanding is that it, it is compliant with both of those regulations. So all good there. Yeah. Super good. Um, a couple of questions about the promo code. Somebody's sharp enough to realize that to see that you can get 30 day free trial anyway. So they're they're asking, is this a 60 day free trial or is it different in some way? Um, it is. a No, it's it's not different in theory. The, I think the code they're thinking about is one that is given to people that have already signed up and then are using Linktree for an X amount of period. So okay. um, I'm always going to be honest with you guys. It's just it's a 30 day promo code. It's good. I'm sorry. I, there was enough time. I didn't mean to put you on the oh, spot. Yeah. I just saw it a couple of different times. So I thought we should ask. Um, right. All right. So another question. Uh, Lori asks, not clear on how uh, to have the YouTube link tree go to subscribe or a Spotify follow me on Spotify. So are, Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, great question. So with the YouTube, with the one to, you know, basically um, allow your fans to subscribe, you'll copy and paste the YouTube channel. Um, and then when you copy and paste it, a prompt will open up underneath the link and it'll say, um, ask visitors subs to subscribe and you'll click that box. And I just want to clarify, this is not the link tree to subscribe feature. This is YouTube as we know it, subscribing to your YouTube channel. And it's just about making that pop-up already engaged. So when someone clicks it, um, and then with the Spotify one, that is, there is no, like the, the pop-up, there won't be any pop-up for the spot, follow me on Spotify. That is just an artist who wanted to create um, a link directly to their Spotify page to encourage people to follow him. Gotcha. Um, and you talked a little bit about playlists being a new or fairly new option. So somebody's asking about Will, it be, will you be adding functional preview playlist options for additional DSPs like Apple Music and YouTube, or is it just a Spotify thing? Yeah, so we're definitely speaking with all of the streaming platforms. Um, the plan is you know, to, to work together and, and have all of that um, ready to go. But right now it is just Spotify, SoundCloud, and Audio Mac. That's great. Um, sorry, let me just take a fast look at the... Oh, yeah. uh, so there are a couple very specific questions. Could you link to Reverb Nation? Could you whatever? And the truth is that you can link to virtually anything you want, right? There's a 
some integrations work differently, but there's an option to virtually add any link. Is that correct? Or? Yes, that is absolutely correct. I think they are probably asking that in response to our music link, the one that is like the music smart link where it automatically finds this release across multiple platforms. Um, Reverb Nation has come up a bit. I So it's good to know that that's something that's important. Um, the other thing is there is a manual option. So we do have like a ton of different platforms that you can add within music link. So if you, uh, if you, if you, create the music link at the very bottom, it would say add manual. And then there's gonna be a list of like 46 options that you can look through as well. All right. And your your auto population of the audio stream uh, tool, I mean, that's just a great thing. I remember seeing it a number of years ago. I'm thinking this was just brilliant. Um, but some uh, some people are asking questions about how that works. I mean, it's if I remember correctly, it's super simple. But if you're setting up your first link tree, how does that, how, how does it auto populate? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So it is, it works with copying and pasting any song or album URL from any of your streaming services. So if your music is on Spotify, if your music is on YouTube music, if it's on Pandora, you literally just copy the link um, and you paste it into the link tree and link tree will recognize that it's a music link and it will automatically find that release across all of those platforms. Super. Um, Bruce is a different Bruce is saying <laughs> we've had several fans try QR codes and, and it hasn't necessarily worked for them. Are they less effective on certain phone types? Is there a way to troubleshoot with fans or anything they can recommend their fans in that regard? That's a really good question. So we were running into some issues before because we only made QR codes downloadable through a PNG file. And so I think what a lot of people have been running into is that file size is just too small. So we did um, increase the option to have an SVG file, which means that you can blow it up as big as you want. So we've been seeing a much, we really haven't been seeing any issues since then. So my recommendation is do the SVG, SVG file, don't even try the PNG. Try the other, sure, makes sense. Yeah. Um, it, Pre-save campaigns, do you integrate with Feature FM or, or any of the pre-save platforms or do you have something of, of, of your own or how does that work? I love this question so much. I joined Linktree back in April and I have deemed myself the pre-save princess because I have been trying to get us to build this internally. Um, and so it is on our lovely roadmap. It is something we're building because we do already have the music link. So if you can do it all in one place, um, that's obviously the goal. So it is definitely coming. Um, that will definitely be Q3 ish. We don't fully integrate with any of the other third parties, but, um, I'm not sure if you saw, but some of the ar other artists will just have a pre-save link and then they'll have the other content within their link tree. So now that you're linking out to one of these existing pre-save platforms, basically. Yes, exactly. Right. So, um, yeah, there's that as an option. Super. Um, you you talked about sample about uh, linking to a, a link tree page, if you will, um, and some people are asking about if they can see uh, one of those again, if, if I understand it properly. Um, I might need some more clarification. Like yeah, uh, I may need it too. I'm sorry, I was reading fast. Oh no worries. That's what I get. See, Jojo and and Rachel do this amazing job of running this thing, and they feed me questions in this doc. And I ignored them for one minute and looked at the chat and now I'm just completely lost. So it's entirely my fault. So they, okay. they can try and help me with that while I find another question. I'm oh, sorry. I think I think he just wants me to the admin page. I can, yeah, let yes. me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is the admin page. Um, your main page is gonna be under the links tab. And so that's where you're adding, deleting, moving links around. Um, it is fairly intuitive, um, which is, I think, probably why I didn't focus too much on it. But uh, I would just really recommend um, looking through these links because these are like our explore links. But all of these, this might sound confusing. Um, I didn't show you all of these because you can literally like copy and paste the links and we'll recognize what type of link it is. And so it'll give you that same option. Super. And then we've got a bunch of questions about sort of free versus pro. What is it? Is it an easy differentiation or? Yeah, you know, I'm going to say the biggest difference between free and pro is the analytics you receive. 
So, and I'm always going to shoot people straight. Like I think the free version gives you a lot of what you need starting out already because you do have access to, um, you know, the music link, the video link, you know, you really have all of that already. The biggest difference is that you can really dive into who your fans are. So you can see, you know, specific country, refer traffic, how your link is performing on a daily basis. You can go as far back as, like I said, since your link has been created And then the other big difference is um, the customization. So in the free tier, you can customize some of uh, like the fonts and the buttons and you can choose what color background you want, but you can't upload your own images. You can't upload your own videos um, as backgrounds. So it just depends on what's important to you. With that said, there are two paid tiers. So there's like a $5 a month paid tier, and then there's a $9 a month paid tier. So you could always start out with the five and see if that's giving you the type of info, like information you need and the customization you need. But the good news is you can pay monthly. So $5, it's $5, you know? And, and it's funny, I think people often, they hear the word analytics and they kind of glaze over like how, you know, it's too much for me, I'm not into math, et cetera. But, you know, we see over and over again, just, just a quick look at, I've got eight links, two of these are getting no action, that's wasted real estate, I should change them to something else. Just something as simple as that, I think, can be, can be very powerful and, and worth the extra few dollars a month. The yeah. other thing I didn't, I am now realizing I didn't show you all, I'll just show it super quick, is when yeah. it does come to the music link um, and really all of these individual links, you can see how that individual link is performing. So this is, um, this is under our paid tiers, but so you're going to be getting like a really quick snapshot. So I like to call this like the non-digital marketing version because you can see how many people clicked the last week. It's super easy to understand where your biggest audience is, where you're, um, where they're streaming. And then the real benefit is seeing how many clicks each of your streaming services is, are getting. So like, let's say everyone's clicking Apple Music and no one's clicking Spotify, or you realize, wow, everyone's just watching my music on YouTube and no one is clicking any of these streaming services. It's just helpful to kind of understand where your audience lives. Um, but yeah, you can play around with that. My, again, mine's depressing, but you can see total clicks, click through rate, all that fun stuff. You keep saying that your link tree is depressing. I, I, <laughs> it's just because no, I'm yourself. the only Come person. On, <laughs> Bruce, look, I have no one, zero clicks from March. I, I don't even have a link tree. So now I feel horrible. <laughs> I, I, I have to, I have to take care of that. All right. So I, I think we're going to wrap up. Um, this was, has been wonderful. Please remember that um, Sammy is going to, uh, take questions in the Banson Town for Artists community. And that again, we'll be sending, you know, even if you were here, we're going to be sending a copy of it, of this recording out to everybody. Uh, and let me just make sure I'm, you know, uh, so she'll be on the Banson Town for Artists community um, answering questions. And we just want to also remember, remind you that you know, there is a, a benefit, we see it with this Bands of Town Linktree partnership that linking your events uh, to Linktree or to your Linktree will, you know, continually update those events just automatically. You update them in one place and they're updated everywhere. Um, so there's more exclusive stuff from us coming soon in the community and more webinars, et cetera. But most of all, thank you, Sammy, so much for this. This was great. And I, the people, you can see from the comments, because I, I bet you're looking, we're very, very happy today. So thank you so much. Of course. Yeah. And if I didn't get to any of your questions, please, I'm like looking at them now. Um, please go on the AMA and I, I'll be sure to answer, answer them. Yeah. Super. All right. Thanks. And thanks to Jojo and Rachel for, as always, making this work so well. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.